as of version 4.5.33.0 teams rooms now appear in teams admin center and we can see here we have one teams rooms here in my tenant and we can see the conference room so it shows the display name uh, the internal name and then the health status manufacturer and things like that before we dig into what teams admin center does let's go behind the scenes really quickly so here we see the settings in our team's rooms. Notice the app version is the, the new 4.5.33.0. Uh, what we need to do to make sure that Teams Admin Center gets used or the data gets pushed up is you have to be in one of these two Teams modes. It can be Skype for Business default in Microsoft Teams or it can be how I have it, Skype for Business with Teams default. Uh, it kind of makes sense. You have to have a Teams account to push Teams data to the Teams Admin Center. So if you are a Skype for Business only operation right now, go ahead and assign a, you know, get the account set up for Teams, assign a meeting room license uh, in order to see your data. You don't have to use Teams, keep using your Skype for Business on premises, but if you want to see your data in Teams Admin Center, you're going to have to use one of these two modes. Now let me jump to the Windows desktop and I'll show you uh, some things that uh, I'll show you the service that gets created that runs all this. So I'm here on the admin desktop. So let me just bring up services. And I'll show you the service that gets installed. So we'll scroll down and look for this Win Device Admin Agent. So that service gets installed, and that is the service that communicates with the Teams Admin Center to both push up. Uh, status updates as well as to receive commands because in Teams Admin Center you can make some setting changes on your Teams rooms so in a way it replaces the Skype settings.xml file that Teams Admin Center does and it's this agent here this service that does that communication dig in real quick and it tells you it's the Teams Admin agent for Windows all right let's hop over to Teams Admin Center and see what all this can do. So to access Teams Rooms within Teams Admin Center, you just go to Devices and then Teams Rooms pops in. From here we can see a quick overview. I only have one device. It is in a healthy state, fortunately, and it is not offline. But if you had 10, 20, or 500 in here, you would then see maybe 480 uh, device or 500 devices, 10 unhealthy, 10 offline, things like that. Uh, if you want to search for specific devices, you can filter here. So there's some filter criteria that you can use to help find a specific device if you want to do some management or troubleshooting or whatever on it. That's there. While we're over here, uh, you can remove some of these columns. I don't think there's a lot of use for me for, you to, for changing any of these or turning any of these off, but uh, so I'll just leave them as is. Discard. And then you can do an export which will export all of your team's rooms. It basically just shows the name of the device, the serial number, uh, and I think the health state, and that's it. So you're not getting a ton there, but it is a good way to just export a list of all of your team's rooms if you have a lot of them. So in here we see all of our devices. When you have multiple team's rooms in here, you can multi-select and do certain things such as restart one or five of them, however many you've, you've selected. Or we could schedule a restart to happen at a given time. Uh, we can also edit some settings. So this is sort of a replacement for Skype settings.xml. So you can come in here, change the username, change the meeting mode, um, automatic screen sharing, meeting name, a bunch of these settings you can change here without having to use the Skype settings XML file. So if I wanted to change the theme to pixel perfect, apply, and then it tells you here the changes have been saved. The settings will be applied after the device restarts. I could now do a restart and go from there. So these are the uh, these are the this is the main landing page. But the more exciting things happen when you click on one of the devices. So we can dig in. We can see seven day quality. Uh, we can see I had one poor call and healthy status not offline again uh, restart and refresh the details from here download the device logs so this is for troubleshooting you can download uh, the logs a lot more easily 
than running that PowerShell command that you have to run nowadays to get the logs. We can see all of the connected devices and what are all the peripherals and see that they're all connected in a healthy state. So you can quickly see uh, what if somebody calls and says there's a problem in a room, you could see that, oh, hey, the uh, a display has been disconnected. So you can troubleshoot from there. Health, again, another view that shows the devices and that they're connected. Here's a very nice feature. It'll tell you if you're having problems with a sign in to Exchange, Skype for Business or Microsoft Teams. So sometimes you might see a banner on the top of the console that says something like, unable to connect or unable to sign in and you're like but we can still run teams meetings and it's possible that skype for business is unable to sign in because of a licensing change or a sip address has changed or something along those lines and then down here we can see which admin agent we're on 2020 07 12 first time i've actually looked at this so i'm going to guess this is july 12th the first release for july 12th 2020 my version of Windows and then the Teams Room app so you can quickly see which version your your MTR is on. If we click over here to details, just gives you the IP address and serial number slash MAC address. So that's a useful quick tip. Activity, this is pretty good for troubleshooting. And I made a bad call happen. I forced this poor call. So if people call and say, hey, we had a we had a bad call or our meeting we had trouble with one of the attendees what's wrong with teams rooms so here we can look in we can see here is the conference room uh, this is the teams room over here is Nestor Wilkie this was the attendee in the meeting and we can see poor call quality was caused by the network big red dot here on network and we can kind of look that we can see 485 milliseconds average round trip time what is this nine seconds Maximum round trip time, 9.3 seconds. Uh, that's terrible. 70 Up to 71% packet loss, average packet loss of 28%. Yeah, Nestor here had bad, uh, he had bad networking. So we can dig in a little on Nestor. Let's see what kind of connectivity. Okay, well, he was connected via Wi-Fi. Signal strength seems pretty good, but I can tell you this is, uh, this is not uh, correct because what I actually did is I took my surface and just walk down the hall uh, out out my apartment until I dropped the signal and then slowly walked back until the signal regained so that's how I forced this bad call uh, we can see it's a yeah, desktop running Windows 10 and then God forbid you use the built-in speaker and microphone like I did but I was trying to force a bad call so we can see all of this stuff about Nestor uh, on our side we can see what devices we're using on teams rooms um, our operating system the name and connectivity this is Ethernet is the connection that's what we were using now up here is there there's advanced so this gives you a view a view of the two attendees next to each other and what devices they were using and we can scroll down a little here and see uh, packet loss rate right here. So we had some really high packet loss, average round trip time. So things were not great on this call. And if you really want to get into it, and I think this is mostly if you're going to open a ticket with customer support services, more data and stuff than you can shake a stick at. But you could probably shake a stick at this anyway. Uh, but there's all kinds of all kinds of details, uh, mostly uh, undocumented. I don't know, like I don't know what a connectivity blobver is, or a blob gen time. No, I don't need to know. Uh, if I, we get to this point, customer support services at Microsoft, they may ask for some uh, some of this information to help troubleshoot some of these deals. And then we can export this report. So let's see what we get in here. Actually, I haven't done this yet. This is all, all new stuff here, so let's see what we have. Looks like it's probably the debug information. Yeah, it's all, a lot of this debug information pushed out. So you can then just take this and mail it or share it with customer support. Uh, and, and you can dig into it or maybe make your own Power BI or whatever you want to do with this stuff. Uh, have fun. You can export it. So that's, that's fun. So we can go back. Look at uh, look at all of our call history down here. See, most of them are good, just the ones that are intentionally bad. 
And then we can see what policies are applied to this team's rooms. I, I'm very simple. I have just the global org wide defaults, but um, you can quickly see what policies are assigned. And then you can create policy packages. So these, these here exist. So if I want to do small, medium business user, I could apply that just for fun. And now these policies will take effect on Teams rooms. So whatever, I have no idea what this is. Um, I'm actually going to undo it. <laughs> um, none, apply. So policy packages can be applied as well. I think that's about it for Teams Admin Center and what we can do. So there you have it. Fun with Teams Admin Center. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. Fun with Teams Admin Center. Uh, this is not real-time information, but it's pretty close. So that poor call showed up about 10 minutes after the call was completed, 10 to 15 minutes. And as I've messed around with the system to check out healthy and unhealthy status, all within five to 10 minutes, it pops up. So not real time, but close enough for management purposes. So there you have it. That's Teams Rooms in Teams Admin Center.